Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at creating this dot matrix display project. So let's dive in and get started. Uh, my project here is 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second and 10 seconds long. And my first step is going to be to come to the library, command 2, come to the generators, look for color solid and hit F4, select the color swatch, make that black. And then just, let's just rename that black and let's make a new group, command shift N. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit C for the circle tool and then F7 for the HUD. So I'm going to set a slightly orangey yellowy fill color and an outline color that's nice and red. And a width of about seven I think is going to do me. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and just drag out a very small circle. Then I want to hit F1 for the transform and just center it up. Next I want to hit L to make a replicator and we just want to twirl open the size here. Let's set the width to 720 and the height to 540. Let's have 125 columns and 100 rows. And then let's come down here to the scale and let's scale it down quite a bit. So let's go for about 15% maybe a little bit larger, let's go for 20%. So let's call this group dots. So next I want to create some text, so I'm going to make a new group, Command Shift N, I'll call this text, hit T for the text tool, and I'm going to select a font called Packed Condensed, but you can choose anything you want. I'm going to type Warning System Fail, or something like that. And I'm going to select both lines, align them to the center, come to its transform and center it up. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Come back to the text. Let's increase the size until my warning is nice and big, somewhere like that. And let's reduce the line spacing. Let's select the text tool, select the bottom line, shrink that down. Select the line between and increase the line spacing. So we've got something like that. And then we can come back to the transform and just center that up within our grid. So now I want to select the line tool from down here in the shape menu. And I want to hold down the shift key. And from about here, I want to draw a horizontal line like that and I want to come over to its outline color, set that to white. And let's just come to its transform and just move it down a little bit. Just so it's sitting between the two and let's set its exposition to zero. Now I want to come back to my text. First of all, let's come back to the text format. Make sure with the text tool selected, we've got both lines selected. Come back to the style. Let's turn on the outline and let's set the fill color to white let's set the opacity down to 25 percent let's set the blur to a hundred and the width will set to 10 and i want to add a blur value of one to the face so now i'm going to come to the text group hit f1 and come down to its blend mode here and this I am going to set to Stencil Alpha. So we've now got something that looks something like this. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my circle here, which is the source for the replicator, and I'm going to hit Command 2 for the library, come to Filters, Blur, and I'm going to select Channel Blur, and I'm going to add it to the circle and hit F3 for the inspector. I'm going to set a blur amount of 20 and then I want to turn off the green and blue channels. Next I'm going to make a new group just above that circle, Command Shift N, bring that circle into the group. 
and I'm going to take that group and drag it into the cell source for the replicator. And just need to make sure I turn on the circle within that group. And then I'm going to select the circle and hit K to make a clone of it. We just need to turn off this group so we don't want to actually see the group itself. There we go. And the clone layer I'm going to set to screen. And then I'm going to come to library command 2, again look for blur, and this time we're just going to have a regular Gaussian blur and apply that to that clone layer. And I just want to come to the inspector, F3, and set a blur amount of 15. What I want to do now is I want to add something that looks like a screen through which we're seeing this dot matrix display. And to do that, I've created a, an image map uh, and I'm going to put a link to that in the comments so you can use it yourself. So I'm going to bring that into the project, into a new group. And then I'm going to hit F1 to come to the transform. Under the Z position, I want to set that to 50 pixels because I want it to be marginally in front of my text layer. And I also want to scale it down to 50%. And then I'll come down to its blend mode, set that to screen. And let's just reduce that down to about 20% for now. And so already that's looking something like a screen. So what I also want to do is to create a little bit of a sheen across this right hand side. So I'm going to hit B for the Bezier tool and F7 for the HUD. And I'm going to set a fill color that's kind of a darkish gray somewhere down around there. And then click in the center at the top there, click up here, click down here, click somewhere around there, and then close it up. And I just want to set a feather of 30. Then I'll hit F1. Again, I want to set a Z position of 50. And set the blend mode to screen. And let's, let's reduce the opacity of this down to 10% or something like that. So it's just a faint suggestion of a sheen on that right hand side. Now I want to just crop it to be the same size as my glass. Uh, so I'm going to make an image mask. So that's Command Shift M. And then I'll take the dirty glass and drag it into the image mask source well, either there or here. And what I need to do is to remember to turn back on the dirty glass layer. And so now we've got both of those elements and the sheen is just being masked by the glass shape. I think I can probably just increase the fill color there. Just bring it up in level a bit. Just so we're getting a little bit more sheen factor, something like that maybe. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to add a light. I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit so we can see the result of this a little bit better. So let's call this group screen. And the next thing I want to do is to add a light. But first of all, I want to lock my background black group so it's not made 3D when I add the light. OK, so Command Shift L to make a light and say yes to switch to 3D. And then we'll come over to the light controls and set an intensity of 200. And let's just increase the fall off start so it spreads out a bit more to 350. Then we can also add a camera. So that's Alt Command C. So let's hit Shift Z to make sure we're seeing the full width of this canvas and come over to the camera transform. I'm going to set an X position of 50, a Y position of 550, and a Z position of minus 1120. And then an X rotation of 30, and a Y rotation of minus 20. So we want to be looking up from the bottom at an angle to this text. Okay, then I want to add a couple of behaviors to the camera, so Command 2 and come to behaviors. First of all, I'll look for the camera behaviors and add sweep. And then I also want to come to basic motion and I want to add throw. 
and then I'll hit F2 to come to the behavior controls. First of all, let me set this sweep here. I'm going to set a start value of minus 5 and an end value of 15. Then here under the throw velocity, twirl that open, set an x value of 8, y value of 12, and a z value of minus 8. Let's have a quick RAM preview to see how that's looking. So now we've got something that looks a bit like this. I think the glass is a little bit too strong, so let's bring that down to 15. And let's take the sheen, and I think we can increase it a lot. Let's go up to 75. I think that's probably going to work better. So now what I want is a mechanism for bringing the text on. So I'm going to come to my first frame. And because this is a replicator, we can use that to our advantage. So I'm going to come to the library, Command 2, look for Behaviors, Replicator, sequence replicator and add that to the replicator itself and hit F2 to come to the sequence replicator controls. Here under parameter I'm going to add opacity and here under sequencing I'm going to select from and under opacity I'm going to select 10. And now I want to come to frame 12 and with the sequence replicator selected I want to hit O on the keyboard and that just trims that to run for just 12 frames. So if I step to about six frames, you can see we've got a sequence that's looking like an oval wipe, and we don't want that. So how do we fix it? Well, we fix that by coming to the replicator itself. And here in the replicator controls, we're just going to check shuffle order. And you can see that that now makes that sequence random across the entire text. We'll also need to add a fade behavior to the replicator. So Command 2 for the library. Let's come to basic motion, fade in, fade out. Add that to the replicator. Let's come to the first frames. You can see what's happening here. F2 for the fade controls. Let's set a fade in time of 12. And that's just going to help to fade in the text, make it look as though it's scrambling on. And I'm going to set a fade out time of 12. And then I'm also going to take this sequence replicator and duplicate it. And then I'm going to move it all the way to the end of the timeline. And then this copy, sequence replicator copy, I'm going to just change the sequencing to 2. And that's going to take it out the other way. And we've achieved that just by changing the sequencing direction. So next what I'd like to do is to get the text to pulse like it's flashing out a warning. So in this case, I'm going to come to the text group and I'm going to come to the library, Command 2, come to Behaviors, and I will look for Parameter and I will look for Oscillate and I will drag it onto that text group. Then I will hit F2 to come to the behavior controls. Here under Apply To, I'm going to look for Properties, Blending Opacity. And under the Wave Shape, I'm going to select Sawtooth. And under the Speed, I'm going to select 60. And I also want to get it to start and end slightly offset. So I'm going to enter a start offset value of 12 frames and an end offset value of 12 frames. Let's have a quick RAM preview of that. And we get something that looks a bit like this. So that's not looking too bad. Finally, I'd like to look at some depth of field blurring on the camera. So I'm going to turn on depth of field in the render settings, and I'm going to come to the camera and the camera controls here. And I'm going to show the depth of field controls here. I'm going to set the depth of field blur amount to 100 and the near focus I'm going to set to 1200. And you can see how that's starting to work. I'm getting this nice blurring in the foreground. But what I want to do is to keyframe the focus 
because as you can see at the end here we've drifted out of focus because of the camera movement. So I'm going to come to my first frame and what I'm going to do is keyframe the focus offset. So at the first frame I'm going to cl click the keyframe button, set a focus offset value of 100 and then I'm going to come to the end of the project and set a keyframe value of minus 100. And that will just rack focus to keep everything more or less in focus with just a sort of shallow depth of field which is quite a nice looking result. So finally I'd like to point out that because this is a replicator we can jump in and make some changes to the look of the scene very easily. If we come down to the circle, if you remember it's down here in this group that was the source for the replicator cell, we can just simply change the colour of it as we'd like. So I can click on the outline colour, change that, and click on the fill colour, change that, and we get something that looks very different. And similarly we can come to the replicator itself and we can very easily adjust the display itself by adjusting the columns and rows. So for example we could increase the complexity by having 175 columns and 150 rows and that gives us this much more fine-grained display if that's what we want or alternatively we could go the other way and we could have 75 columns and 50 rows and we get a much more coarse looking display if that's what we want. So there's really a lot you can do to customise it to your own taste. OK, so that's the project completed. I hope that's been interesting. A fairly simple project, but some useful tips, I hope. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I hope to see you again on the next one.